Imagine if you can, standing at the bottom of a stairwell. You know, it could be a, a corporate building, you know, a department store or whatever. You're, you're standing at the foot of the stairs and you step there and there's a person in a wheelchair, a paraplegic, and they're just sitting there looking up. Imagine if you can what's going through their mind. When I, when I think of people with disabilities, not everybody that has a disability is clearly, visibly demonstrable in what their disability is. Some people have mental illness like myself. But most people, when they think disabled, they think, you know, handicapped to the point where they can't walk or, you know, they, they have uh, appliances instead of actual limbs or fingers or whatever. And I'm thinking about this and, and I'm saying to myself, you know, there, there are like four, four phases to, to dealing with a person's handicap and I'm thinking to myself you know I'm looking at me when I'm saying this and I'm and I'm realizing that not everybody is going to accept a that I am uh, disabled in any way shape or form because I can articulate my needs and I'm specific about what I want and people think oh you know, you're just a whiny, spleeny baby. You know, you're you're a typical, your typical American, mouthy. You know, you're gonna get what you want because you think you're superior. But the reality of it is, people like, for example, Robin Williams or Jonathan Winters or people who do in your face out in the front of an audience. Uh, performance art you know people think well they're normal but they're not obviously you know Robin Williams died they say it was a suicide some say it was an accident but he asphyxiated because of his illness Jonathan Winters uh, came out of the United States Marine Corps after serving in a war and uh, he went into a mental state. And throughout his career, people never thought about it. They never even imagined that, that Jonathan Winters was mentally ill. But he is. He was. And I'm thinking, you know, how difficult it is to be you know, to have this facade where people looking at you can't see what you see. They're not looking from inside your head. They're not looking out through your eyeballs. In my case, beyond mental illness, I've got the disability of cataracts, uh, diabetic retinopathy, and macular degeneration. Since, uh, I want to say August of 2023, when I had my eyes examined by an ophthalmologist, surgeon, uh, my eyes have gone from 50% to 95% visually impaired. In fact, as I'm looking at this screen right now, all I see is a flesh colored blob and gray. Everything is just blurry like a fog. You can't see that. You can't tell. You don't know. I could be just full of crap. I could be, you know, telling you a story, hoping to get sympathy. But actually, people who are disabled are not looking for sympathy. They might be looking for some empathy, some understanding. You know, 
hoping that you'll cut them some slack. But as I as I think about these things, there's there's like three or four points that I'd like to make. And the bottom line is the floor. Where where does the bottom come up to hit you when you're disabled? The floor. One, two, three, floor. It's serious because it's depressing, it's anxiety, it's loneliness. And loneliness is a soup created, created by depression, magnified anxiety. People who are disabled feel excluded. Most of the time, if they are socially involved, engaged, they're the elephant in the room. Everybody's looking, but avoiding. They're, they're, they're try they don't know what to say. They don't know how to treat a disabled person. They, they want to treat them like you know, with some dignity and respect, but they don't know how. Well, number one, loneliness is a killer. Loneliness is what causes most suicides. So if you do nothing, if you, if you, if you treat a person who is disabled as if they are different, of course they are, we are, I am different. But if you treat me that way, I'm a pariah. Look it up. Being excluded because you don't know how to treat me. First off, and I would say the letter A is human being to human being. You're not talking to a wheelchair. You're not talking to a hearing aid. You're not talking to a blind man. You're talking to another human being. Communicate. A nod, a wink, a touch. Anything is better than nothing. Anything beats loneliness. Anything is superior to being excluded because a disabled person didn't do it to themselves. They didn't become disabled on purpose. They did not cause their disability, whether it was nature, God, or whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to blame, whoever you want to accuse, the person who was disabled did nothing to deserve the way you're treating them. So treat them with dignity, treat them with respect, Love them like a human being. They deserve it. And I would say, number two, we really need to think about disabilities as how do we make people handicapable instead of handicapped. I have a son-in-law who has been in a wheelchair the majority of his life, all of his adult life. He has a job. He has a great personality, very sweet, loves my daughter, loves his, his foster children, his adopted children, his children. And just, I don't even think about the wheelchair. I see him. And the way my daughter treats him with all the love and respect and admiration a person should give another person. And moving on to number three, we, we build bridges as human beings. Our, our biggest thing is communication and building bridges and making things so that uh, things are, are accessible. It's critical that we do that, that we continue to do that. And 
no matter what, you know, financially it costs, spiritually, emotionally, the gift that we're giving to people who have disabilities is immeasurable. And you can't, you can't really put a price on it. So the point I'm trying to make is be priceless. Make life wonderful for people who have been suffering all of their life so far. Maybe the rest of their life can have some, find some, can be joyful. I love you all.